Hello, I'm Juan Davis, Chief Creative Officer at KCT and PBS SoCal, and we're partnering with the newsroom of KPCC and LA East on a daily reporter roundup. Let's start with Natalie, who can help us explain why the grocery stores are still out of some of the things we need. So as you'll recall in March, when we first got the lockdown orders, people were buying things in bulk and shelves were empty. Since then, you're able to find toilet paper, but you'll still have trouble with baking ingredients and also some brand name disinfectants like Lysol and Clorox. So Airtalk spoke with Annie Gasparo of the Wall Street Journal, who said that nationally out of stock levels at supermarkets are around 12% compared to the normal five. That's because people are staying at home, eating at home, demand is a lot higher. What's interesting is a lot of companies have not ramped up production to meet that demand because investing in warehouses and equipment takes a lot of time and money, and they're banking on things being back to normal in a couple of years. Caroline continues doggedly covering the census for us. She has an update today on the homeless count and how that process has been going. Yeah, so this week, the U.S. Census tried to count the estimated 66,000 people living outside in L.A. who are homeless in L.A. And this is really challenging because census takers don't have an easy address that they can just reach out to. And homeless folks can be wary of government employees. But it's really important that they are counted because there's a lot of services they could depend on, like health care or nutrition assistance. And I talked to a couple homeless service providers and they said the count went pretty well, but they had to take it into their own hands because they felt like they didn't get really good guidance from the Census Bureau. One provider told me that they had no idea what to do with Project Room Key residents. Another person said if she hadn't sent the resident data directly to the Census Bureau, she doesn't think those people would have been counted. And I actually talked to a Census employee as well, and I haven't confirmed this, but I asked her if she thinks it's possible some providers have been left out of the count entirely, and she told me it's almost certain that some have. So Caroline, I'm sure you'll follow up and see if we can confirm that for next week. Yes, I will. Ballots are going out soon. Libby has more on how to study up so you make sure to understand all the races and propositions you're going to be asked to vote on. That's right, Adrian. There's going to be 12 statewide propositions on this ballot, not to mention local measures like Measure J in Los Angeles, big races, including who will be our next county district attorney, a new member of the Board of Supervisors, close congressional races, two LA City Council contests that are looking quite competitive, and the list goes on. So it's a lot, but right now on LAS.com, we have just launched the Voter Game Plan, which is a resource you can use to plan how you are going to vote and study up on everything that you'll be voting on. Take voting by mail. More than two thirds of Californians used a mail-in ballot in the March primary, but in LA County, we have generally preferred to vote in person. That means this could be your first time getting a ballot in the mail. We have a handy video up right now with five keys for voting, and one of those is is to remember to sign your ballot. That's one of the top reasons that ballots are rejected in California. A rule of thumb also is to sign the way that you did on your driver's license. And please remember that if your mail-in ballot is rejected for any reason, your registrar must contact you and give you a chance to fix it. All of that info and we are answering your questions right now on laist.com and that's the voter game plan. And finally today, Karen joins us from the KCET production desk to tell us about the latest project from the Latino comedy performance group, Culture Clash. Thanks, Adrian. So yeah, what I've been seeing in Southland Sessions following arts and culture stories is this really creative response from all disciplines, particularly in theater. So the Totally Fake Latino News, as the name suggests, is a fake current news show from the Culture Clash, the uh, guys Richard Montoya, Ricardo Salinas, and Herbert Serguenza. It's the Totally Fake Latino News with Culture Clash. It's 10 minute episodes and it's a kind of mixtape where the trio combines like old footage, their Fox sketch show, their new reported material, and even news clips. And the result is this like fast paced, irreverent news reports that leave you laughing and crying both at the same time. And it's told from a very Latinx point of view. It's a great watch, especially for those who don't want to be too caught up in all the despair of these times. Well, thank you, Karen. And thank you all of the KPCC and LA's newsroom. And thank you for tuning in. Take care of your health, your family, your neighbor. We will see you on Monday.